didn't have a script for today's video because today I'll be showing you guys my new 3D printed teleprompter, what it does, why I need one, how I got here based on this older rough one and a version that you can print yourself. Okay, what is a teleprompter? Why should you care? So, I'm using a teleprompter for basically every video that I do down here in the studio. Whenever you see me talking at this table like this, straight to the camera, I'm usually reading off of a script. So, what I'm seeing on my side, let me just show you, this is connected to my streaming computer down here. What I'm seeing on my side is this. So basically I have the full text right there. Um, I can pause it because I do have a keyboard on the floor that I can just step on and hit the space bar. I can pause it, this scrolls by, and I can read my previously prepared text and focus just on the presentation because that's, that's what, I, what I need. I'm not a native English speaker, so I do need all the help I can get. Like it's fine if it's just like a, an off the cuffs video that doesn't have a ton of information to it, but as soon as it's something where I want to teach you something or do a review on a printer that you know needs to convey some information in a structured way with me being able to pronounce words correctly, then I do need the script prepared like this before I start because I've just found it's, it's less work for me to prepare a script beforehand and it also creates a better video in the end. And actually if you look at where teleprompters are used, I'm not alone in that. Pretty much every TV production has some sort of teleprompter involved. Linus Tech Tips uses a teleprompter on basically all the videos. And fun fact, I was actually ready to give up on this entire YouTube video thing like two or three videos in. Like I was just not happy with what I was getting. But thankfully the uh, back then Google Plus 3D printing community were like, well, you know, dude, this is good information, please keep going. So I figured it out. And part of that figuring out was building myself a teleprompter. Now, this is not the first teleprompter that I built. This is actually the second one. The first one was even jankier than this one, but it's all the same idea. You have a camera in the back that looks through a reflective clear sheet. Typically these sheets do have a bit of a tint to them to cut down on like the double reflection that you get on the front and the back, but these are so thin that it doesn't really matter. Then, you know, camera looks through it this way and then down here you have a screen and you look through the teleprompter and you see the reflection overlaid on what you'd see behind it. When the camera looks through it though, it does not see any of that. It just sees whatever is on the other side of that sheet. So basically when you look through it from the front, you see the reflection from down here. When the camera looks through it, the camera sees the reflection from up here, which is why this needs such a large chunk of plastic down here and of course the, uh, the piece of cloth that gives you a bit more contrast when actually reading off of the teleprompter. Now this particle board teleprompter served me very well for many years actually. This was super cheap to put together and I didn't have a printer large enough for this at the time. But when One Click Metal reached out and were like, hey, can you produce a few YouTube episodes for us? You can show up with that. Like, this is this is not something you show up to for a shoot. So I designed and printed this one and originally it was going to be a hybrid between you know plywood parts and you know 3D printed parts that would fit on a smaller printer but two things came together. First of all I got the Raptor 2.0 which is a massive 3D printer that can print these things and also Daniel from Munich sent me this little guy. So this is the same idea as this bigger teleprompter. It's also got a, a small glass sheet in here and you have the opening for your camera and the idea is you just put your phone in here and you have an app that scrolls text to you. Basically, like so, and there you go. There's your teleprompter. I've always used Windows software to do my teleprompter scrolling and I also wanted a space bar that I can just step on and have it play pause. Um, there are a few really good solutions apparently that use iPads. Uh, you have one iPad in here that does the actual scrolling, the text display, and then you have another one or an iPhone that you can control it with. That's more of a two or three person setup where you have one behind the camera, one person controlling the teleprompter speed, and one person just being the talent and presenting that script. For me, kind of doesn't work and also using like two Apple devices just to have a, a single screen that scrolls text seems kind of wasteful. With the smaller teleprompter design from Daniel you can also drop in a small LCD screen. This is a 7 inch screen that's usually sold for Raspberry Pi. You get a small board 
that I've just fixed with duct tape on there uh, that just has an HDMI input like this one. And that does fit in here and that does work, but I do prefer the larger screen, so I made this bigger one. By the way, this small teleprompter, I've linked it below. You can download that on Thingiverse and print your own. Now, this larger teleprompter, what do we have on here? So of course, it is as much 3D printed as possible. On the bottom, we've got a few standard camera gear parts. We've got uh, the tripod plate that of course mounts this to a tripod. And we've got the 15 millimeter carbon fiber rods. These are the 15 millimeter WS, the lightweight support system. I've used the same spacing and rod size on my DIY glide cam. And this is the exact same size. These rods both attach to the tripod and also carry all the parts that are mounted to it and you can slide them back and forth to adjust things. So in the front here we have an old 11.6 inch screen from an old netbook. This is just a small board that you can buy for 20 or 30 bucks off of eBay or AliExpress that converts an old used LCD panel into a full functional you know, screen basically that has HDMI, power in, DVI, VGA, headphones in out, all that good stuff. Now I use this very panel because I already had it, but you can also use a ready-made like compact LCD screen. You can get those as camera monitors or just for, you know, small backseat entertainment. All that sort of stuff works with the way that I like to use Windows apps as long as you can connect it as a second screen to a computer works fine. Next up, and this is a separate part from the screen mount, the reflector hood. So this holds a rather large piece of polystyrene. Polystyrene is optically pretty good and the sheets you can get are very flat. One thing that I've noticed while I was using um, like picture frame glass, which this small guy uses, is that if you look at them, you know, from an angle, you can see that it's not super flat. They are sometimes really wavy and you can actually see that in the image that your camera is producing. This one is rather good, the one that Daniel sent me, but I've seen that in just regular picture frame glass. It doesn't matter if you look at just the picture up front, but if you have a camera looking through it, that can be a real issue. Now back here we have a topology optimized camera stool. This thing is basically just propping up the camera because if the camera was down here it would basically see the edge of the screen all the time. So I just prop it up a bit that means I can move it a bit further forward which means I'm not seeing the edge of the screen in frame. And then of course this entire thing is fairly modular so these are standard clamps these are all the same clamps there are eight of them six of seven of them and basically they just have a 3 8 inch thread that you can use with a quarter inch thread adapter so you can screw anything to them you can see one right in here and they've got two m4 through holes which i've used to mount all the parts onto the rails and then this is just the standard manfrotto tripod plate which of course means that you can just snap it into a tripod and you know don't have to hold it which of course is kind of uncomfortable because it's kind of big. So I printed all the large black parts on the Raptor 2.0 which is that large format 40 by 40 by 50 centimeter printer in Protopasta HTPLA. The idea is because it's HTPLA if it actually gets hot when I leave it in a car or something it's just going to crystallize and it's not going to warp a lot. I've not tried that yet but that's the idea behind that. Large parts like this are kind of hard to print out of something that is temperature resistant because it does want to warp. So I stuck with PLA. Maybe you want to try PTG if you actually want to print something this large. And then on the back of course we have the black Molton cloth. This is just a, a square piece of cloth and what this does of course is as you're looking through it it gives you a lot more contrast against the white text. So while I was printing this thing, I actually learned a few things about the Raptor 2.0 uh, and specifically about how fast you can print with it. Because if you're printing fast, you can either go faster in like linear motion, which is the 60, 80, 100 millimeters a second, or you can go faster by increasing your layer height because that also means that you're completing your print faster because you have less layers to print. But the Raptor 2.0 was limiting both of those because the extruder and hot end combo they use just has a really hard limit on how much material it can push, which is right around 5 cubic millimeters a second, which means at a standard 0.2 millimeter layer height, you can only go to like 60, 70 millimeters a second before you really start getting gaps in your lines. Or if you increase your layer height, you have to compensate by reducing the speed accordingly. So I did not bother to actually uh, increase the layer height on this one. I just went with, I think, 0.2 or 0.15 or something. And you just increase the feed rate slightly and you get a finer print while still being like at the maximum of what the printer can do. I've also tried increasing the temperature dramatically and all those things. 
doesn't really make a difference on that Raptor. But other than that, this thing printed on the very first try. Um, I don't know if the Protopasta HTPLA actually helped with warp on this larger print. I think uh, a normal PLA would have worked just fine as well, but you know, HTPLA did work really well on this one. I did not temper it, which is the big feature of it, of course. Now with the design in general, I am really happy. It does everything it needs to do for me. There is one little flaw that I found and that is that this screen can't go far enough back. So if you actually look into the camera, then the text is gonna be fairly far up and it kind of sometimes cuts off the very top layer depending on how you look at the screen. So, so just being able to slide the screen slightly further back would definitely help there. Um, the other thing that I did notice is that the rods are actually on the short side. I mean, all the parts are where they should be, all the parts are where they need to be, but the, uh, uh, this is unwieldy. Um, but a bit more adjustability on these rods would have been nice. Now these are 30 centimeter rods, which is pretty much as long as you can get them. Having some that would be ever so slightly longer would be nice, but it's, it's not really needed. And that's it on my DIY 3D printed teleprompter. Um, it's still fascinating how simple that Pepper's Ghost reflection trick is, um, but how well it works. Like from the other side, you can definitely not see a single thing. The camera doesn't pick up the reflection at all. But if you're talking to the camera, or if I'm talking to the camera, it just helps me a lot to, uh, to stay on point and not to ramble and also to make sense in the stuff that I'm saying. So if you want to print one like these, if you have a printer that is large enough, it does not fit on a CR10. Uh, I did upload the files onto Thingiverse, you imagine Prusa printers. I never know which of those sites is going to be the most reliable in the long run. So I just upload it everywhere. Um, you can freely download this one and use it and print it. I've also linked the Fusion 360 design below. So if you want to take a look at the admittedly not very elegant design, uh, you can do so and you can make your own modifications to it. Uh, this small teleprompter from Daniel is also linked below. He's uploaded that onto Thingiverse and you can print and download that as well. I really do enjoy having a printer available that can just print large stuff. Yeah, it, it does take a while and it's not the most elegant experience and the parts don't always come out super nice, but it's just really nice having that, that design freedom where you can just plop in a, a 40 centimeter design and, and send it off to the printer and it's, it's just gonna print. You don't have to glue things together. You don't have to post process it. It's just ready right off the machine. That is very nice to have. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, you can download the STLs and the design files in Fusion 360 for this part down in the description below. I've also put all the parts that I used um, as in the rails and the plates and the connectors and, and all that stuff. Uh, that is just small rig components from Amazon, linked below. Very good stuff, highly recommended. And yeah, if you did like the video, give it a thumbs up, get subscribed if you want to see more like it, all the usual good stuff, join in YouTube memberships to keep the channel going or on Patreon, that does help out a ton. And let me know if you're interested in seeing more video film related projects and builds. Um, I mean, I can, I can always use more gear, right? And if you can 3D print it, why not? All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.